I bought this 3D printer kit for $154 on eBay, put it together, and tried it out on a previous episode. <laughs> it didn't go well. But I've since improved it quite a bit, and I'm getting pretty good prints out of it. So let me show you what I did and the results I'm getting on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. In fact, it's their generous donations that paid for this $154 printer. Thank you so much. A while back, I found a great deal on some E3DV6 clone hot ends. Came with tubing, wiring, the whole bit for $10. So I bought three of them. And it took forever to come from China. And then when I got them, they were actually V5s. So they're taller than the V6, but it was such a hassle to send them back, I ended up just keeping them. So I decided to install one on this machine and see how well it worked. I planned to use a filament cooling fan, so I needed to wrap the heater block in insulation. I just used some Kapton tape to wrap this insulation material around it, and this helps keep the heat in. I found this E3D V6 X carriage mount for a Prusa i3. It's by user Tech2C on Thingiverse. And he's got a great YouTube channel. I've watched his YouTube channel for a while. So I know this was a great mount. It had the duct work and everything. Really nice design. And it turned out once I printed it, the V5 fit in this nicely. It just was longer. So I printed these pieces out just the way they were, but I had to manually drill one hole into the base so it would line up to the holes on my 3D printer. So I removed the crappy extruder that came with this thing that I had modified with my own bracket and then mounted the E3D V5 to the carriage and it fit nicely as you can see here. And then I took the extruder that I stole from my TiVo Tarantula. I love this thing because it's got these nice big arms to grab. So I stole that, put it on a mount that I had in the corner of the top and then from there I just wired it up around the tube, the Bowden tube, with some plastic wrap and then installed it in place. Uh, I had to cut this down a little bit from the original length. So I got it to the right length, all wrapped up, and this thing was looking really good and coming together like it was designed this way. So I was really happy with it. The next step was to install the fan, which just kind of pushed in place, and then there's one bolt that goes into the bracket as part of the design. While I was doing all this, I noticed this bed was just loose and, and wiggling around. And I checked underneath and the bolts were even completely loose. And this all came pre-assembled. Even the rod at the back, when I wiggled this thing, the rod would shake back and forth. So this thing clearly wasn't put together right, and I didn't fix that. I just assembled this thing to their instructions. So I decided to just take it apart, tighten everything up, and then I took a suggestion from a viewer who had pinch this metal section, this, this middle frame, between two nuts on both sides of the 8mm rod. And that really didn't take much. I just ran some 8mm nuts down and then tightened it on both sides. That really stiffened things up. And then I put everything back together, tightened every screw on the bed and everywhere else. And once I got that all together, this frame seemed a lot stiffer. Now, these wood pieces were actually slightly warped. But when I tightened these nuts tight against each other, it took some of the warp out and it also forced the rods to be tight in place. So by doing both ends, the rods essentially tightened up and that seemed to help quite a bit. So I had to reassemble everything, including the, uh, the belt and that just, that was easy, just a few pieces in place. And then I realized there was a couple little tiny nuts I need to tighten in between and when I was done this thing was solid there was no wiggle at all so the next step was to print the duct and I actually printed it on this machine without a fan and I ended up two pieces one was the original was too short the next one was the replacement it was long enough for the E3D V5 I actually used Tinkercad to stretch it out and then once I printed it it fit perfectly in place just press fit there's mounting tabs for screws but I didn't even use them it fits perfectly so now the real question, how well did it work? Well, on the left is what I started with when I got the machine. Then I modified it, and then I added the E3D V5 clone, and then the E3D V5 with a fan. What a difference. It was well worth all the effort. I decided to experiment a little bit. I found this round duck on Thingiverse, and so I brought it into Tinkercad, and then 
I brought the duck that actually worked on the machine in and chopped off the bottom and lined these two up. It seemed like a perfect fit. And once I had it in place, and it was looking really good. When I looked down the chamber, it was lined up like these two were designed to go together. So I grouped it together and printed it out on the machine along with a second one that I printed and designed that was way off in dimensions. But I installed the one on the right and tried it out, and here's the results. Here's a Benchy with no fan, Benchy with the round duct, and then Benchy with the straight duct. And clearly the straight duct was a lot better print, so I was happy with that. So here's the final Benchy up close with the straight duct, the E3DV5. This is the best print I've gotten onto this machine. It's certainly not perfect. There's Z-banding going on, so that's the next thing i got to attack. But I've come a long way from where this thing started, and I still haven't spent more than 200 bucks. The next experiment is to print these brackets that separate the threaded rod from the X-carriage, and that's supposed to help get rid of the Z-banding. So there's three different ones I'm experimenting with. I'm going to try these out and see which one works best. So far, I'm still under $200 in improving this thing, and that's my goal, to keep it cheap, but see if I can turn it into a good printer. I'll be traveling to the Midwest RepRap Festival, a big 3D printer conference in Goshen, Indiana, on March 25th and 26th, and this guy's coming with me. So if you want to see it in person and you're there, stop by the booth. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing, check out some of my other videos here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to my Patreon logo. And if nothing else, please subscribe. Click on my logo down here. So that's it for this week. I hope to see you at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. If not, I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.